In today's demo, we're going to see IBM ODM, which purpose is to design, develop, and deploy business rules applications. For example, where your systems and applications were set up with ODM so that when a customer returns a product, they're automatically refunded based on simple to complete sets of conditions. That same thing will apply for returns, guarantees, applications, and much more. We're going to focus on the decision center, which is the business user perspective of IBM ODM. This is where we'll see how we can create and edit rules and decision tables, create what if scenarios to validate our rules. And finally, we'll see how to deploy these changes and an example of how IBM ODM will interact with your application in real time. To create rules, the first thing that we need to define is the flow uh, that is gonna look like this. As you can see, those boxes match with the names of the folders that we have in the left part. And this flow is going to define the order and how the rules are going to be executed. If we open the first folder, the automatic rejections, we're going to see that we have some rules uh, already created. Let's open one. But for rules, we have two options. The first one, it's a rule that, that looks like this. As you might notice, you don't need to know any type of uh, coding or programming language. Instead, what you're going to use is native language, right? And of course, uh, we can edit those rules by clicking in the, in the pencil bottom. So yeah, let's go back and create one from scratch. To create a new rule, we just need to click in the plus bottom, select the new rule, and let's call it a name. Let's say, well, test rule in this case. So once we create it, we're going to have the conditions in the actions that our rules are going to define, right? As you can see, I don't need to start typing anything. The tool is going to suggest what are the next steps or what are the options that I can have to define the rule. Or we can also start typing and it's going to, by clicking the control and the space button, it's going to show me the drop down list with the options that we have to define the rules. So let's say if the city of the address of the refund application, as you can see, I don't need to worry about typing anything or any type of coding. The tool is giving me all the options that I have once I keep completing the, the rule, right? Let's say it is not empty. Then again, I'm gonna have the options for the actions. So let's say that we're gonna set the city when it's empty to Denver. And that's how you create rules. As you may notice here in the, in the below part, Whenever I'm typing something and it's wrong, it's gonna throw me those errors so I don't have to worry about creating a rule that it's not gonna be working. The tool also is gonna immediately tell me where are the mistakes and how to edit those, right? So we just need to delete this part and save this, right? Now the second option that we have is uh, tables. So we can create tables when uh, we need to interact with multiple conditions. So let's open one that it's already created. As you can see, we can define multiple uh, properties that we need to validate uh, in the rule and when we need to do multiple actions. So by creating a table, it's gonna also uh, help me reduce the complexity of the rules and present this by an easier way, right? So once we define all of our rules, all of our tables, the next thing that we need to do is testing these rules. So we're going to take a look first to the test tab. We have the test, which is where we create what if scenarios uh, that we want to validate. To create those scenarios, uh, I'm going to it's gonna generate an Excel file that it's going to look like this. And as you can see, what I can do is create uh, multiple scenarios, uh, passing them some uh, input values to all the properties that I have defined for my rules. And I'm gonna uh, also define what are the expected results that I want from those input values, right? So as you can see, you can create what if scenarios by using this Excel file that it's that you can generate also from IBM ODM and adding the, the properties and values that you wanna check, right? So once you finish setting those scenarios, you upload this Excel file into your test sheet and you run it and it's going to generate a report that it's going to look like this. And if I take a look to it, uh, it's going to show me all the scenarios that I defined in the Excel file with the expected results and with the actual results that I get uh, by running uh, my rules, right? 
So if I go to the details, in this case, I, I'm taking a look of the projection reasons of the refund and those values match as I as expected. Right. And also you can do some comparisons between a reports or or tests that you have run, right? So if you click in the compare button, you can select which reports you want to take a look to and see the differences, the differences between those two, right? In case you added uh, more scenarios, in case you change the rules, you can see uh, where those changes were or how the changes of the rules affected my results. Yeah, how does this work together with my existing applications? So for that, we need to go to the deployment step. And as you can see, we're going to have a deployment configuration, right? So every time we need to do a change to a rule and we need to deploy it to the environment that we require, we just need to click here in the deploy bottom and that automatically is going to, of course, deploy the changes, right? And and yeah, how do we call uh, IBM ODM? It's going to be via an API call. So you can integrate that with your current e-commerce application that you're using or whatever type of application that you use to connect your process. Uh, it's pretty easy to generate that JSON file to integrate with your system. In this case, we're going to use uh, BAW, IBM BAW, Business Automation Workflow, as the calling application. Yeah, in this case, we created mm -hmm. some previous orders. So if we select, let's say, the first one, it's going to automatically populate all the data. So that might be how your application currently works. Uh, based on login users or something like that, right? Once we submit the button, it's going to call the application via the API and it's going to return the results of based on those rules that we define, right? So you will see that it took less than a minute to go to IBM ODM, passing all the input values and getting back the, the results, right? So in this case, based on the data of the first order, the refund was rejected, and here we can find the, the rejection reasons for that specific use case, right? And we can either go to edit the refund until we can make it approved, or we can create a new one from scratch. So let's say that we select the third one, we submit the button. Again, it's rejected based on the data. And again, yeah, we have the rejection reasons right here. And finally, uh, for the third example, uh, so we pass the data, we submit it, and finally we got uh, a refund approved, right? So this is how it's going to look nice. in your own application. So if you can connect your application uh, via API with another one, then you will be able to make that call to IBM ODM.